Hi everyone! So today we're going to look at a couple of fountain pens that could be considered budget fountain pens and I think they're really great quality and I still use all of them today but if you're a beginner fountain pen user these are a great place to start. Uh, yeah, so let's get started! So the first couple of pens that we're going to look at are the Platinum Preppies. Now these are probably the fountain pen that's in everybody's beginner guide just because they are so cheap and they are so reliable. So let's do a little freeze frame on this cap here because this is why the Preppy is so awesome. You can see in this cap it has another little cap inside on a spring and when you close it it creates a pretty much an airtight seal and keeps your nib wet. So I have had the same cartridge in here for at least eight months and it's a waterproof pigment ink and it has not dried out. It never hard starts, which means it doesn't take a while for the pen to start it, just the, you uncap it and you go. They have three different sizes. This one here is the extra fine, which is the 02. So as I mentioned before, I replaced the cartridge that comes with the pen when you buy it, which is just a normal ink with this waterproof platinum carbon ink. So when you buy the pen, you'll get a cartridge of the same color of the body of the pen. So if you buy a blue pen, it's going to be blue ink. If you buy a red pen, it's going to be red ink. So this one here is another platinum preppy. This one is in a fine. And this is part of the Japanese Wa collection. So I think they had maybe five or six colors with different designs on them and they're really pretty, but they are exactly the same pen as the one I just showed you, but they are in the fine, which is the 0.3. Uh, and the great thing about all of these preppies is that you can unscrew that section there that has the nib on it and just switch it. So if you wanted this barrel on an extra fine, you could take it off like this and put it on the other pen. And this pen actually came with a converter. I got it off of AliExpress and it had the pen and the converter, which is rare. Normally you just get the pen and a cartridge. Last one of the sort of cheaper platinum pens that I was going to show you. This is called the Meteor or the Shooting Star, Platinum Shooting Star. And it has exactly the same nib, exactly the same section. So you could twist this off and put it on one of the other bodies, but it is designed a little differently just with the aesthetic of it. So this one's a bit of a smoky gray and the nib has a little star on it. Whereas you can see in the other one with the WA here and the normal preppy, it's a clear section. But yeah, you can screw these off and switch them around so you can have any body on any nib. These only come in a fine, I believe, so you would have to get a platinum preppy um, or a platinum profonte to switch out the nib if you wanted to have a medium. And this came with the converter as well, as you can see here, which is a really good deal. Uh, yeah. So I'll put all the prices and the links to these in the description. The prices fluctuate, but these are around 11 and the preppies are around five. So just to give you an idea that you're paying just for an aesthetic here. Okay, so this next one is the Pilot Kakuno. Now this one is a little more expensive than the preppy. This probably runs from eight to $14, depending where you buy it. It does have an inner cap here too. It's not on a spring system, but I find that it keeps the nib really wet. It's great. I never get a hard start with it. This particular one is a clear demonstrator one. You can get them in all different uh, sort of colors, but I like this one. It doesn't look as cheap as the ones that have the solid color. It uh, houses a cartridge, but you can also get a converter for it. I just use the cartridges because they're super easy and the converters are kind of expensive. Uh, you can probably put more ink in there, but I just find that these cartridges are super easy to clean out and reuse. It has a little roll stop there on the lid, uh, which is nice and simple. It doesn't stop it from rolling a lot, but you know. Here I'm just showing you one of the other greatest selling points of this Kakuno pen is that you can t completely take it apart. So if you're afraid of using shimmer inks or anything in your other more expensive pens or even ones that you just can't take apart, this one is great. You can take everything apart, clean it all out, put it back together. It even has a system to line this nib up so it's super easy. It just slots in there and then you just pop it back in the section and you're good to go. And that little smiley face on the nib is encouraging you the whole way through. So I own a couple of these Pilot Kakunos and I have them all in medium because I like quite a broad nib and the uh, Pilot Kakuno runs quite fine. So I believe the extra fine in the Kakuno is a true Japanese extra fine. Uh, if you're interested in a really fine nib, I, I think this is probably one of the cheapest fine nibs that you can get that is good quality. Okay, so now we're heading into like super cheap territory. These pens, the Jinhao 992s, are around $2.00. You can get them for cheaper or you can get them a little more expensive on Amazon, but I got these off AliExpress and it was $1.57, I think, including shipping. So depending on what sale is going on, super cheap. 
and they're really easy to fill. You can just unscrew here and it actually comes with a converter. I know, I can't believe it either. Under $2 with a converter. It does have a little silicon ring there, which makes me think you might be able to eyedrop it. I've never done it because the converter is great. Uh, but yeah, super easy to fill and you can actually take the whole thing apart. So if you want to use shimmer inks, go for it. You can clean them out. The colored versions, like the one I just showed you, there's a bunch of different colors, only come in a fine or extra fine, whereas this clear demonstrator actually comes in a 0 0.7 stub nib up to a, I think a 2.5 stub. And I did get the 2.5 stub, but it can't handle the ink flow. The feed is exactly the same, so I wouldn't bother getting any higher maybe than the 1.5. But this 0.7 stub is super smooth and the reason it's called a stub nib is that it doesn't have any tipping material on it so it's not a round line it's a more of a flatter line that you get but the edges have been rounded off so it's still a super smooth right it's just a little wider all right so let's just do some writing samples with all these pens so you can see how they write uh, I'm a left-hander and I have really had to change the way I write I used to be a side writer so with ballpoint pens and pencil it's okay it doesn't smudge that much but with a fountain pen you really have to be an underwriter which means your hand is below the writing or you have to be a top writer or some combination of that so that you're not smearing the ink above so i have kind of changed the way i write and tend to do be an underwriter now and I always wear a little glove, sort of those gloves that you use on your iPad because your hand oil uh, can transfer onto the paper and fountain pen paper is really sensitive to that. And then when you're writing over it, the oil from your hands that's been impregnated in the paper will repel your ink. So this first one is the Preppy Extra Fine. So as you can see, that's pretty fine. They write nice and wet. Uh, so there's a lot of ink going down, but it's definitely finer than this next one, which is the 0.3, which is the fine. And I'm just going to go through here. I might speed it up a little bit just so you guys don't get bored. But what I'm going to do is write the name of the pen and then the name of the ink. So in the black preppy above, I used the Platinum Carbon Black, which is a pig pigment ink. And this is also a pigment ink. This is the Rohe and Klingner Sketch Ink in Frida. And I also use the sketch ink in this Meteor, which is the same width as the one above. So 0.3, the fine. Now this is the Platinum Medium, which I didn't show in the footage because it's pretty much the same pen. But this is a 0.5 and it is a really different line width than the extra fine and the fine. It's super juicy. The Platinum Mediums are really juicy. Uh, and the 0.5 is just so smooth and nice. This one is the Pilot Kakuno. And this one I'm using a shimmer ink in, so I can take it apart and clean it out. This is the Diamine Coco Shimmer, and it's really pretty. I'll hold it up uh, after we finish writing out all of these different samples. And now we have the Jinhao 992s. So this is the fine nib, which it ships with, or you can get an extra fine. And then this one is the 0.7 stub nib. So as you can see, it has kind of a calligraphic sort of look here. It's not a round line. It's sort of a bit more of a straight line, but very subtle. So here are our writing samples up close. And you can see that that 0.2 extra fine is just a little thinner than that other fine for the Platinum Preppy. And then the Meteor Shooting Star, which is the same as the 0.3 Preppy above, is very similar to that. And then look at this Platinum Preppy Medium 0.5. I think this writes really a lot heavier than the other two, the 0.3s. Uh, it's a lot wetter, it's super smooth, it's a really nice nib. And then we have the Pilot Kakuno in Medium, which look at that shimmer, it's so beautiful. Uh, and this is supposedly the same width as the Preppy, but I feel like it writes a lot wetter, but a lot thinner. So just a different feel, those two pens. And then we have our Jinhao 992s in the fine and the 0.7 stub. And that color versus Martian ink is such a beautiful shader on the fine. And the 0.7 stub, uh, although it's a little bit more expensive than the fine, is really fun and worth trying out. So this was just a quick little look at three different brands, the Platinum, the Pilot, and the Jinhao. Uh, again, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there for similar prices, uh, but I thought I would just show you a couple from my collection that I still love. And I think if you're starting out, you know, maybe you don't know what width of pen you like, so maybe getting one of each of the preppies so you could get an extra fine, a fine, and a medium from the preppy and just see which one you like the best. I ended up getting the fine first and I felt like it was a little bit thick for drawing. So I got the extra fine, but I found the extra fine was a little bit too thin for writing. So you just kind of got to 
experiment and have fun with it and see which one you like best for what you need it for. So I hope this was helpful guys and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!